Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are looking at Space Engine once again. Now, Space Engine has just been updated. The version number on the website tells you it's version 0.98. I think it's basically identical to the version 0.974, which we've been testing for the last few months. And it, of course, has a ton of new features. The main, one of the main set of features is a huge refactoring of all the spacecraft in the game, the way the spacecraft work, adding, well, adding the ability for them to actually work in interstellar space. Because that was uh, something of a, well, it would frequently wouldn't work, basically. This is a spacecraft. It is the Y-Wing or the X-Wing. I don't remember. It's not like either of the real Y-Wings or X-Wings. We're flying around the back of Saturn. At this point, I just want to show you, first of all, uh, that we now have little uh, reaction control thrusters, which we can use to turn the spacecraft or whatever. I'm uh, obviously pointing prograde. I can use the commands to change everything. And uh, yeah, I can of course use the mouse wheel to throttle up to 100% and start basically getting into an escape velocity trajectory from uh, Saturn. Because perhaps we want to go somewhere. So let's actually time accelerate so we can watch ourselves fly away from Saturn one more time. Ah yes, yeah, Saturn, that most beautiful planet. So yeah, Space Engine, in case you haven't heard of it, is basically a giant space exploration engine. I hesitate to use the word game because clearly it's an engine that's designed for a game, but the game itself hasn't really turned up. But it is so fabulous. It provides lots of real scientific data. And then on top of that, it fills in a whole lot of gaps with procedural data which uh, is you know, pretty cool stuff. You can really explore not just this galaxy like you can in Elite Dangerous, but you can explore a whole universe where you can travel out to all the galaxies and travel into their cores. Obviously, there's more synthetic data in here than there is real data. Uh, you will never get bored of... Uh, You'll never run out of things to find. You may very likely get bored of finding the same spherical objects all the time. So yeah, there's the Pleiades there. We should target that. Let's uh, go to there. That's the Pleiades. I'm going to target that. Bingo. And I think if I ask it to warp drive there, we can actually watch it do this. So, oh, no, wait. What way is it going? Why is it pointing that direction? I said target... Select target. Let's try that again. Where's the Pleiades? Yeah, Pleiades. That's what I want. Pleiades. Why are you going in that direction? I don't quite understand why, but I shall let it do its thing. Let's Maybe it's going to kill the relative velocity first before it goes into hyperdrive. Just going to time accelerate and let this happen. I haven't quite figured out how the warp drive properly works on this, so... Every time I've gone through, it's done something slightly different. Now, now what is it doing? Time is paused. Let's let time run again. Where are you and what way are you planning on going? Ah, now we're facing... That looks like we must be facing towards the Pleiades, right? Let's take a look around. That must be it. So I guess we had to kill our relative velocity and now... We're going to start and get ready to boost up to the speed required to go to warp drive. Here we go. 30, 400. Oh, yes. Starting to fly by Saturn at kilometers per second. And we are in warp drive here. Let's slow speed down again. Look, you can see the warp bubble here as we're flying through space. And now we are there and the warp bubble evaporates it's like magic i tell you we're still relative to saturn let's set the relative velocity to the reference body should be set to one of the members of the pleiades uh, reference body i'm going to try that one not apparently i'm unable to select anything wow we have a quintuple system there this is the great thing with uh <laughs> this is a great thing with Space Engine is you'll click on something and it'll suddenly tell you, oh, that's like a globular cluster or that's a quintuple star system. This is Alcyon, actually. This is a real uh, star here. Let's uh, go to it. Why not? Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Target should be Alcyon. Yeah, let's go to it. Kill your velocity. 
and it's doing this warp drive thing. I guess it kills a relative velocity and then it does the warp drive thing. And we have the warp drive effect, which uh, is not probably not physically correct because honestly, I'm not sure if anybody's actually sketched what uh, an Alcubierre warp drive would actually do around it. Obviously, it warps space in weird ways, but I haven't seen anybody that's actually done a really good study of how it should look. How, I don't know how far away we are from the target. It says 0.7. Yeah, we're at 28 AU, and we're now moving in at kilometers per second, and the engine has not shut down properly. So, okay, so we've got that. We've got the spacecraft. We also have some new features in the universe. I think if we go into the catalog, we have all the stars and everything locally. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go to free mode, and we'll fly there. Filter. What I want to look for is the planet's name's main star will be a planimo. What's a planimo? A planimo is a planetary mass object. A planetary mass object is basically a failed star. It is a sub-brown dwarf. And it is too cold to emit any light. This is... There we go. Look, we can see, we can make out that it's circular, but there's nothing else that's visible. It's just dark because it's not giving off any light of any consequence. Uh, the game engine at this point doesn't generate any light, any ambient light for all those stars, so that's why uh, you go, don't get to see anything. If we can add, we can increase the exposure and it will remain black. Looks very nice. We can totally saturate this to the max. We can go to the max with the Fahua Gads and it will remain black. Because the game doesn't do anything. But yeah, you know, planimos are real things. There are planets that have been observed in deep space. Uh, one of the closest objects, or at least one of the objects with the highest proper motion, is believed to be a sub-brown dwarf less than seven light years away, which has a mass of about seven to ten, sorry, four to ten Jupiter masses. Too small to even fuse deuterium. So they do have heat, resort, uh, heat reserves. And as the planet collapses, the atmosphere heats up and that emits you know, infrared radiation. And of course, that cools it down so it shrinks more and more. So it's essentially giving off infrared radiation as defined or as driven by uh, gravitational collapse. Okay, well, what else have we got in the galaxy? We should go back to... Let's go to the Eagle Nebula, actually. That would be kind of cool. Eagle Nebula. Because, of course, I stopped there on my way to to Jacques Station. And this took me several hours to fly this distance. But in Space Engine, it is possible to do this in but a blink of an eye. The Nebula are 3D affairs. And we're not sure how physically accurate these things are because nebula mapping still requires a whole lot of a whole lot of interesting interpolation. Uh, so yeah, I don't know where this data comes from in this case, but that looks pretty cool. The Eagle Nebula has the fingers of God, if you remember. Whoop, fingers of creation. That's what they call it. fingers of creation, and that's what the fingers are. I think there. Let's try and rotate them around. So we can see, ah, there, look, the pillars of creation, that's what they call them. <laughs> There's a lot of different names that people come up with for these nebula. But these are basically clouds of really thick uh, particulate dust, which is collapsing into new stars. And as the new stars are forming, they are be they're driving off the gases around it. Of course, in Elite Dangerous, I was merely stopping by the Eagle Nebula uh, because I was sightseeing. I was looking at stuff because I was on a 22,000 light year trip from the main bubble all the way out to Jacques Station to deliver all, in, all sorts of important supplies. Now, uh, with my well-equipped ASP that has basically the best frameshift drive you can buy off the shelf and then modified a little bit still, I can get maybe 2,000 light years per hour with that heavily laden cargo, and that's only when I'm concentrating hard. Now, when you're flying around in Elite Dangerous, 
does seem like pretty fast, and it is pretty fast. 2,000 light years is insanely fast. It's faster than many science fiction, uh, many iconic science fiction spacecraft. But when you're actually traveling through the galaxy at 2,000 light years per hour, boy, does it seem sedate. Like, look at those stars barely sliding by. This isn't the you know, the star fields that we were led to expect from Star Wars or a Star Trek. I mean, look at the Enterprise flying around in Star Trek. Those stars are just zipping by. It must be going incredibly fast. If the Enterprise was able to get that kind of speed, surely Voyager could have lasted just like one or two episodes and we could have avoided all those crap episodes and those you know, excuses for counting torpedoes uses and things like that. Incidentally, some people are maybe only getting a thousand light years per hour. Boy, that is going to be a tedious journey if you ask me. I uh, hope you've got the whole season of Voyager put together so you can watch that instead. Yes, Space Engine has, uh, well, has more planets, more features than even No Man's Sky is boasting. Of course, uh, No Man's Sky has a lot of gameplay at this time, I would imagine, whereas Space Engine is still working towards actually integrating that kind of thing. Yeah, the game does come with a whole bunch of bookmarks for places that you might want to go and just admire the scenery. This is but one of many, and man, don't you just want to explore all these things and find out what's going on in there? Yes, here I am, standing on an alien world, watching as an eclipse comes through. We can fly up above the clouds. Now we can see these stars above us. And as we go upwards, we should be able to see what is casting a shadow upon this planet. Let's just fly faster and higher. Wow, look at that. Just sneaking out behind us. Uh, whoa! There definitely seems to be some interesting coloration going on there. I would surmise that there is a serious amount of planet shine being emitted by that parent body. Look at it. You see, one side is illuminated directly by the sun, and the other side is getting illuminated by the reflection off of that planet. Now, all the brightness and everything is scaled in Space Engine, you know, unless you set it to realistic views, which very few people do, because it isn't actually particularly well supported. Uh, yeah, so... The difference between those two sides is flattened and reduced so that you can experience the whole thing in one beautiful viewpoint. See, if we sit above the planet, we can actually watch it as it orbits. And look, you see there's two separate shadows, and once it gets to there, we have Pac-Man. So yeah, I will probably spend some time playing around with spacecraft, seeing if I can dock things, maybe see if I can land them on one of these planets which is being boiled away by its parent star. Uh, you know, I'll wait for some of the spacecraft mods to be updated because there's some really good mods out there for this. But ultimately, the good news is it's out of beta, it's out of testing, so everybody can go and download this again and it's really uh, going to be a great time sink for you. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.